Once upon a time, there was a dear little girl who was loved by everyone who looked at her. One day, her mother said to her, Come, little Red Riding Hood, here is a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother. Set out before it gets hot, and when you are going, walk nicely and quietly, and do not run off the path. The grandmother lived out in the wood, half a league from the village, and just as Little Red Riding Hood entered the wood, a wolf met her. Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked creature he was, and was not at all afraid of him. And then you meet me, and your whole world changes, because everything I say is everything you've ever wanted to hear. So you drop all your defenses, and you drop all your fears, and you trust me completely. You seldom choose the circumstances that offer meaning to your life. Given a list of options, stalking isn't one I'd ever pick. Crimes against women are socially and legally perpetuated and are often not taken seriously. According to the Stalking Resource Center, more than half of women murdered by their stalkers have reported the stalking to the police. As a young woman, I am all too familiar with the encouraged precautions mothers drill into their daughters' heads. Don't look or speak in an inviting way, especially alone or at night. Carry your keys in your hands and travel in groups. To draw attention to the severity of this issue, I present the following selections. The fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood by the Brothers Grimm, The Poem Liar by Henry Rollins, The Memoir In His Sights by Kate Brennan, and The Original Writings of John Hinckley, as quoted in The Insanity Defense by Lincoln Kaplan. Because women shouldn't have to be afraid to exist. Good day, Little Red Riding Hood. Thank you kindly, Wolf. Where are you going so early, Little Red Riding Hood? To my grandmother's. Where does your grandmother live, Little Red Riding Hood? A good quarter of a league further on in the wood. Her house stands under the three large oak trees. The nut trees are just below. He surely must know it. The wolf thought to himself, what a tender young creature. What a nice, plump mouthful. As you well know by now, I love you very much. Over the past seven months, I've left you dozens of poems, letters, and love messages in the faint hope that you could develop an interest me. But once that was my reality, I saw two basic choices. Walk straight through or shy away. My nature is to walk straight through the hard things. Grief, sorrow, fear, doubt, anger, whatever presents itself. So he walked for a short time by the side of Little Red Riding Hood. See, Little Red Riding Hood, how pretty the flowers are about you. Why do you not look around? I believe, too, that you do not hear how sweetly the little birds are singing. You walk gravely along as if you were going to school, while everything else out here in the wood is merry. Little Red Riding Hood raised her eyes, and when she saw the pretty flowers growing everywhere, she thought, Suppose I take Grandmother a fresh bouquet. That would please her, too. It is so early in the day that I shall still get there in good time. So she ran from the path into the wood to look for flowers. And whenever she had picked one, she fancied she saw a still prettier one further on and ran after it. And so got deeper and deeper into the wood. The casual eye could assume that I have something to hide. And actually, I do. Myself. If 
I hadn't learned how to hide, I wouldn't have lasted this long. I don't know why I feel the need to cause you so much pain. Maybe it's something inside. I startle awake. A gunshot? I hold my breath and strain to identify the noise in the ensuing silence. Nothing. Was it a car backfiring on the highway? A hunter downing a deer in the woods? Maybe one or the other. Maybe something more ominous. I'm never sure which way to turn, toward the ordinary or the terrifying. I know the many messages left at your door and in your mailbox were a nuisance, but I felt that it was the most painless way for me to express my love for you. I lie still and focus on my surroundings, work my legs toward the edge of the bed, and ease into position. I've taken to wearing sweats and a long sleeve t-shirt to bed instead of pajamas in case I have to leave suddenly. Running or taken, either way, it makes me feel a little less vulnerable. I edge my arm from beneath the cool sheet, slide the cell phone from under the spare pillow, I practice the drill just in case my fingers slide over the keys, 911, 911. I remind myself to breathe. Slowly, silently, I remain as still as possible. She was surprised to find the cottage door standing open. And when she went into the room, she had such a strange feeling that she said to herself, Oh dear, how uneasy I feel today. She called out, Good morning, but received no answer. So she went to the bed and drew back the curtains. There lay her grandmother with her cap pulled far over her face and looking very strange. Oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear. Oh, but grandmother, what large hands you have. All the better to hug you with. Oh, but grandmother, what a terrible big mouth you have. All the better. Each time I drive in my car alone, a single image catches my fear like flash flood after a sudden rain. A window is lowered in a passing car. An arm is raised, a gun is aimed, and a single bullet enters my head. Perhaps that's how he'd have it done. It would be over in the most ordinary moment of a life. I feel very good about the fact that you at least know my name and know how I feel about you. At least you know I'll always love you. I've got to do something now to make you understand in no uncertain terms that I am doing all of this for your sake. Only when I've driven miles away, constantly looking in my rearview mirror, does my body free my brain to think of something other than whether he's behind me. I'm left to wonder what might come at any given moment. The only thing that's certain is this. I can never return to life as I once knew it. And I'll never know the life I might have had 